Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you my rematch against Terminator Hank, who is currently rated number one in the world. I think I'm something like number six. And this game is a league game, and this time I'm playing free people, and I get two action tokens. You can see that my opponent allocated zero eyes, rolled one, and then still managed to get only one muster and a whole bunch of character movement. And I got four character dice. So obviously this is a little bit of a strange start. I did get Dead Men of Dunharrow, which is a way of facilitating turn one Aragorn. If I had gotten a Will of the West, I might have considered it. But against one eye, obviously I'm excited to move a bunch of times. And hopefully the Fellowship doesn't get caught and can make a bunch of progress. And my opponent is, you know, obviously in a tough spot without getting two musters, but a bunch of army movement can still make some progress. So um, let's see how the game begins. So I start by passing. They move a army in Gorgoroth, and that's interesting. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I guess they're planning on attacking um, into Gondor, but as you'll see later in the round, they muster... Sauron won towards war, which I think makes a lot of sense because they need to move these armies around. I think this army from Dol Guldur is going to head up to Woodland Realm because I did not get any army movement. And this is a quick, this is a quick and easy attack. So I, I think that makes a lot of sense. But then why, why bother doing this movement in Gorgoroth first when you can just be attacking into Woodland Realm? So, okay, I go ahead and move once and I am safe. And then my opponent does this move into Nairs the Forest. Super minor thing. I wonder about moving this unit. If I'm going to end up moving this unit from Dale into Old Forest Road, I don't think I would do that with a character die. But you could be in Eastern Mirkwood, and then it would be two moves to capture Dale without an attack if I end up moving to Old Forest Road. It just gives a very slight option. I don't know. It, maybe it makes no sense because they have Shadows Gather. They might want to re relocate to Lorien. So... I guess that makes sense. This is super minor. Okay, I think about moving this unit from Dale and Told Force Road. I don't have scouts. I want to move the Fellowship. Let's get going. Um, my opponent misses, and then they're very happy, I would say, to get into Old Forest Road. It activates the north, but they're going to get to besiege Woodland Realm when it doesn't have a lot of units in it. I move a third time. Obviously, this is 50-50 chance of getting caught and then about a 50, a little better than 50% chance of getting revealed. So overall, I'm taking about a 25%, maybe 30% chance of getting revealed into Moria right here. So in my favor, I'm, I'm okay getting hit as long as I don't get revealed. Um, but it turns out I get missed. So I've now managed to make three safe movements on turn one. I'm going to make it past Moria turn one, or at least... I don't have to, maybe I'm going to move again, maybe I won't, but either way, I'm past Moria. I'm not revealing into Moria. So that is obviously a lot of good luck for me. I think the chances of getting revealed at some point in those three moves, even against one eye, is quite high. So I think that was that was quite good luck for me. My opponent goes ahead and attacks Woodland Realm. I think that makes sense. What else are they going to do with their dice? They're going to put the elves to war early, and then next round, hopefully they can get both Saruman and the Witch King if they roll enough musters. So I think this makes total sense. But then why why did we do this move into Gorgoroth? Just have an extra attack in Woodland Realm. All right. So um, I think about moving again. I, I could maybe, so what I considered was separating Strider here to Fords of Eisen. One, two, three, well, one, two, three, four, five, hmm, did I count wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I can get there. So six to Fords of Eisen. And then at the beginning of next round, I can play Dead Men of Dunharrow to Pilar Gear. And, you know, that's good, but... I guess I'm thinking, one, I might not roll a Will of the West next round at all. And two, I'm moving pretty darn fast with the Fellowship. Let's just keep going. Let's. I mean, at this point, I feel like my strategy is to move quickly with the Fellowship. And therefore, I want to keep Strider in and guiding. Okay, so um, we. I move a fourth time because I rolled four character dice, and then my opponent misses. Obviously, incredibly bad luck there, and I just got four movements. That's just ridiculous. I think that's 
incredibly low odds. I, I don't know if we're talking like 1% chance or, or what, but it's got to be less than 10% chance. That's very, very low um, what just happened. So incredibly good start against one eye to not get hit at all. Um, I guess we could calculate that. Let's calculate that because we like doing statistics. Um, here we go. I'm going to do the math real quick. So the chances of getting missed on the first one is 5 out of 6. And then you also have to get missed on the second one, which is 4 out of 6. And then you also have to get missed on the next one, which is 3 out of 6. And you also have to get missed on the next one, which is 2 out of 6. 10% chance. All right. So not we're not in 1% land, but, you know, that's... Um, very good odds. Very good luck for me to get a 10% 10 10 uh, outcome. Okay, so my opponent attacks into Woodland Realm. I go ahead and play through a day and a night because I think I'm probably not going any military. And if I can weaken this army, then um, it would be great if Woodland Realm can withstand a bit. All right, they get zero hits and I get one plus one from Confusion. So that's obviously uh, great for me. And now I'm feeling you know, this is just what, what, what more could I ask for out of turn one? I moved four times, uh, took no damage. My opponent did not get a minion. And, uh, I mean, that's incredible. So really, really strong first turn for me. Just, just good luck. Okay. I get, I will go alone. This is going to facilitate if I want to get Strider into, um, Rohan, I can do that. I think about declaring here. I'm not sure why I didn't. I guess I'm not particularly worried about the extra tile from Moria. And I'm thinking that if I get hit and it happens to be a zero reveal and I have a Will of the West, I would rather be able to kill off Gandalf with the extra tile from Moria. So sometimes it's possible for that to benefit me. Um, and I'm not really worried about corruption since I just got four safe movements. So that's that's my thinking. Um, I don't declare. My opponent has to allocate one eye. They roll one more. And they got four musters. So they are going to be able to get the Witch King and... Uh, sorry, they need three musters plus an attack to, to put the elves to war in Woodland Realm. So they are going to be able to get both their minions turn two. Um, and I get a Will of the West. So now they have a little bit of a debate, do they, you know, depending on what happens if I manage to kill off Gandalf. So um, I start by passing. They obviously get Isengard to war, and then I move once to see what happens. So on this one, they hit me, uh, which is obviously lower odds than most of the other moves last, last round. But they hit me here, which is obviously okay for me. And they get a three, which is again, perfect. So the luck for me in the early game has just gone incredibly well. And... Um, my opponent now uh, plays Wormtongue. And I realized after the game, this is actually illegal because um, you, you have to have Saruman in play. Um, you know, how much did that mess with things? I, I don't know. They probably just would have drawn a card. Um, or maybe they would have maybe they would have done something like muster the Southrons and Easterlings tour. I, I don't know. At this point, they're trying to delay Gandalf, I guess. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I don't think this really affects much. Um, it does, it does, you'll see later it does impact Rohan a little bit, but, um, I, I think that's not that big of a deal. Okay. I move again here because I want to keep going with the fellowship and, um, what else am I going to do with that character die? I'm happy to move twice. Um, I get hit again. So two times this turn. You know, I, that doesn't really balance out last round, but obviously we'd not expect me to get hit twice this round, zero times last round. It sort of balances out a little bit, but still I'd say the hunt has been, been in my favor. And again, I didn't, did not get revealed. So that is, again, great for me. And I'm happy to take the corruption. I mean, I obviously would rather not get hit, but, you know, it's good not to be revealed at this point. And um, now I can play I Will Go Alone effectively uh, to reduce corruption if I want to. So it's not that bad. Um, and then my opponent attacks into Woodland Realm. This puts the elves at war. They happen to get um, two hits here, and I get zero. So now it's looking like maybe they are going to be able to take Woodland Realm, um, which is which is great for them. And um, I muster Gondor towards war because um, it's always nice to be able to defend Dol Amroth in advance of Corsairs. And it seems like they are going to get some musters. If Corsairs are coming, I would love to have... Um, Dol Amroth defended if I can. 
So that's my thinking with mustering there. You know, I could have put an elf into Lorien or um, Rivendell. It doesn't look like my opponent is super fast to attack Lorien or um, Rivendell. And so I'm waiting on those musters. Okay. And I am kind of expecting the Witch King to come into play and then um, Saruman to come into play. But they muster the Southrons and Easterlings toward war. And I think this is a minor mistake. Probably better to get both the Witch King and Sauron, unless you're going to delay Gandalf by a whole round. And so at this point, I have to use a token. Um, and I uh, I decide to draw a card. So I get the Red Arrow, which I'm happy to see um, scouts. That's a useful effect. And also I'm happy to see a mustering in Rohan that's going to let me muster an Edoras, move to Westamnet, and then shore up Helm's Deep before this army in Orthanc comes and attacks it. So I'm happy to see that card. And um, then my opponent decides to get Saruman here. So I think if you're going to if you're going to delay Gandalf, great, delay Gandalf. But now letting me get Gandalf, but you only get one minion. I think you traded a future die for one of my tokens. Maybe it's worth it. I mean, that's kind of like a day without dawn for one die, but a future die for one token. It's it's pretty even. And by to be fair, by not getting the Witch King, you are delaying the red arrow. And I happen to have it. So there there are some there are some benefits there. Um okay. So I get Gandalf shows up in Fangorn because that's the safest place for him. And then um I declare. Because I think, you know what, there are a lot of reveals in the pool. I intend to move relatively quickly. Um it seems like Shadow is not really gonna focus on the fellowship and either way I might as well make progress. Now I, I debated between Eastham net and Western Brownlands. The, the um, drawback of Eastham net is that if um, I muster Rohan toward war using um, the red arrow, then if they have a uh, storm crow, then they can push Rohan back away from war. And I know that I have, um, I will go alone plus Dead Men of Dunharrow. So it's not crazy for me that I might get a companion into Helm's Deep, possibly, you know, Strider with a Hobbit or something like that, and and activate it. So I'm not particularly worried about Wormtongue um, in terms of getting Rohan to war. So I don't know. I think this is super minor. I think I decided Eastamnet because I wanted to be able to stop by Minas Tirith if something went really horribly wrong with the hunt. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that really benefited me much. Um, so probably would have been better to go Western Brownlands just to avoid the possibility of Stormcrow. It's really minor. Okay. Um, and that, by the way, you might've seen the fellowship get revealed and then hidden again. That is a little tip. If you want to reset the fellowship counter, um, instead of clicking up here and then clicking over here, you can just reveal and not reveal, and then it resets it. Okay. My opponent allocates one eye, rolls zero more, and I only get one movement. So, you know, I, I, I think it's balancing out over the course of the game. Um, obviously, I would have been happier to get two movement, especially against only one eye. I have four steps to go, four movement to go to get to Mordor. So my plan is to move twice this round, twice next round. Um, and if I had rolled a Will of the West here, I might have seriously considered, um, like if I'd gotten a bunch of Palantirs, I could have done something like, I will go alone, Dead Men of Dunharrow, Crown Aragorn, something like that. Um, but... With this roll, I'm obviously going to use this um, character die to to move, and maybe I'm going to spend a ring to move a second time so that I only have to do two moves next round. Um, and I think, you know, I've had this for a while. I will go alone. It's certainly tempting, but I also want to keep the fellowship moving. But having these as options, sort of if I get a roll with a bunch of Palantirs, it just keeps my options open. So I don't mind having them, even if I'm maybe not going to end up using them. All right, I end up passing because I'm not particularly worried about my opponent putting a um, Nazgul on me. They muster the Witch King at this point, and now I'm going to be happy to play the Red Arrow. I think it might have been a minor inaccuracy to play it with a muster instead of a um, Palantir because I'm I'm happy to have musters at this point of the game. I can muster Gondor toward war, and then I can start putting units into Gondor. Um, and I'm going to probably use these army musters to move... Um, this army that's now going to be solid in Edoras into Westamnet. So, and I want to get this unit from Iron Hills into Erebor. So, um, super, you know, minor inaccuracy, but something to think about. Okay, my opponent attacks Woodland Realm, and they manage to take it out. 
And obviously that's good for them given the, how that first combat went. Um, and then I go ahead and move armies because I want to get um, this army in Western Net ready to get into Helm's Deep. Um, and now my opponent draws a strategy card. I think that makes sense. And then they play on, on, they went. Sure, why not? Um, I, I don't know how worried they are about the fellowship. Are they really trying to stop them with a, with a red tile? Maybe, um, yeah, I guess they're going to play half orcs and goblin men and they're going to play this red tile and then save shadows gather for later. So that makes sense. Um, I go ahead and move at this point and I'm safe. That's what we would expect. And then they play half orcs and goblin men. They're going to be able to take Dale. Obviously that's good. And then I get my armies from Iron Hills into Erebor, um, I think for a second. And um, I wait to do that. I think, what was it? What was my thinking there? Um, I guess I didn't want to be left with only a Palantir if my opponent decided to attack into Fords of Eisen right now. I, I don't know. I, I don't know that this order really matters. Oh, I remember. Um, I have Strider as guide. I, kn I had decided that I wanted to use a ring to move, and therefore um, I'm using my ring now in case I get hit and revealed so that then I can use this last die to hide the fellowship this round if I want to. So that's that's my thinking. That's why I do it now. Okay, um, so I get missed again, and then my opponent moves into Eagle's Irie and um, gets their armies ready, and I go ahead and retreat into Erebor and uh, Helm's Deep. So I get those strongholds nice and strong. And then my opponent attacks into Dale using Swarm of Bats, which is certainly good in case I had scouts at this point, uh, but I don't, and they get a hit, and I get a hit, and they leave one behind in Woodland Realm, which I think makes sense given that I still have this unit here in Carrick. And um, then we move along. So um, what happens next round? I draw... Gua here. I guess I've had Gua here for a bit. My cards have not been too relevant. Um, I thought about separating Strider there, but having without having Will of the West, I don't. I don't think it made a lot of sense. Um, I get rid of Gua here. I'm still thinking I want. I might play. I will go alone, and if I'm going to use a Palantir to separate a companion, I'd rather heal the corruption. But I think that might have also been a minor mistake because if I had kept Gua here, then I could in the future, put Gandalf into either Lorien or um, Helm's Deep, depending on what um, Shadow attacks later. So, and I Will Go Alone does not allow that. So, you know, obviously one corruption is nice, but um, the Fellowship's doing fine. Um, I'm two moves away from Mordor and at negative a lot. Uh, let's see. I still have um, 11. So I'm at negative, I'm at negative eight corruption right now. So I'm, I'm doing fine on corruption. Okay, my opponent allocates one eye, rolls one more, and I again only get one movement. So um, at this point, I think my my um, yeah my statistics have averaged out. I, I'm, I've just rolled an average number of characters and wills at this point. Um, so it is nice how things work out. But still, getting that early game start was was obviously helpful. Um, okay, so I start off by moving because I don't want to give my opponent a chance to draw into cruel weather or other things that mess with the fellowship to possibly stall me. And um, they get the South Rounds and Easterlings all the way to war. And I go ahead and move with a ring again, because now this gives me a chance to get into Mordor, um, which is obviously very good to get into Mordor turn turn four. Uh, at the end of turn four, start of turn five. So um, I use my second Elven ring. I use up the muster. And maybe I could have used the Palantir instead of the muster, but I'm happy to um, play Elven Cloaks, get Elven Cloaks into the pool with this Palantir. So that's my thinking. Um, and then I get hit and a zero reveal. That means I'm totally safe from cruel weather. And um, I reveal into minus Morgul and there's a two. And um, I said random. And then I said, er, because I wanted to think about it for a second more. And I had, I, when I was at three corruption. And so I think it's better if you're at three corruption, I don't think my opponent is going going to um, mess with me too much. But given that I'm revealed and given that I'm at three corruption, which is the precise number you need for Morgul Wound, um, I was inclined to just take the corruption. And so I thought about it for a second more. I was I had decided that I was not going to take a random, um, but then my opponent had drawn a random one and we drew Strider. And so we talked about it and we decided, you know what, I really had decided he wasn't going to take um, a random and... Um, I think it's my job to draw it anyway. I don't think it's Shadow's job to draw it, but I'm not. I'm not totally sure. Um, either way, 
uh, we decided to take it back. And I said, okay, look, next time there's a random companion, we'll lose Strider just, just to keep it fair. Um, though typically if there's a random event and you really do undo it, then you just do it over again. But I, I felt like it was a little bit to my advantage. It, it, it feels bad, you know? Um, and so we just said, okay, next time there's a random companion, we'll lose Strider. Uh, and I went up to five corruption. And what's interesting is my opponent, I think had Morgul wound. So they, they could have played Morgul wound, uh, getting me up to six here. And it was right that I was worried about that. Um, but I guess my opponent just is not going to worry about um, corruption at all. The thing is, when you have this many companions in there, it's possible to um, corrupt the fellowship even when they have companions in there because you can allocate a bunch of eyes and then roll, potentially roll um, even more eyes. And then if they if you draw an eye up on Mordor, then um, they can only lose one companion. So you could still end up taking some corruption as you go up Mordor. And um, with this many companions in, you could easily put three or maybe even four eyes and hope to draw an eye and dish out some extra corruption damage. Plus there's Isildur's Bane that you could potentially get. So um, I don't know. I guess it I guess it doesn't really make sense, but um, that's what I was thinking. I'm, I'm happy that they're not messing with the Fellowship here. Okay, they muster into North Rune, and then um, they play Shadow Lengthens, which is obviously really just perfect to get the army from North Rune and East Rune into Dale. They really set this up nicely. And then, this is a cool move, when they do the movement, they move through Iron Hills into Dale. And you can do that because it's just a normal movement. This is free for movement and they capture Iron Hills. So that's a very efficient, precise way of taking over Erebor. This army should be enough, I would say, to take over Erebor, especially if I don't have Dane Ironfoot's guard, which I don't at the moment. All right. So um, they attack Erebor, which is great. And then I play Elven Cloaks because that's my plan. And maybe I should have um, drawn a card here because I'm not going to now at this point use I will go alone. Um, and so it doesn't really matter, but... Um, I want to, I feel like I want to get Elven Cloaks in there anyway. And then they, um, attack Erebor. I go ahead and, you know, play some defensive cards. They played a strategy card, so I want to play Daylight. Um, they get two hits, I get four hits and, uh, they press and I play Confusion, but they swarm bats it. So that's good. And then we end up in this situation where I have three units and they have, um, six hit points so you know usually the guideline is about double so this is close right this is a very close battle um i accidentally used this token to draw a card because i was confused about what that token did um and so uh we undo it and then i end up mustering um the north to war i guess um it's a little weird. I, I think, you know, I was thinking about mustering, I was thinking about mustering Gondor, but I ended up mustering Carrick. Uh, I ended up mustering the North because I want, I feel like this army in Carrick can end up getting to Dale and then starting to muster more in Dale and really mess with the North. I, I, I mean, mess with do up here. Now, I think that might have been, that might have been wrong. And, um, Maybe what would have been better is to use one action to move this army from Carrick to Old Forest Road. And that way, these these two units could not attack Carrick, because if they do, then I can move into Dale. And my opponent only has, um, only has one ring, and neither of these are attacks. So they can make a total of one attack. And it would just, it would just sort of mess with... Um, mess with them up here, just waste dice. So by mustering the North to war, I think it's okay. Um, the the other card that I forgot about is that there's Grimbjorn. And so if at some point I draw Grimbjorn, I could play Grimbjorn. Normally I use it for scouts, but I could play Grimbjorn in Carrick. And then I could just muster the North to war and just keep mustering in Carrick. And then these two units could not take out Grimbjorn. So um, I think this might have been a minor inaccuracy. I could have timed it a little different just to cause more trouble. What ended up happening was I mustered the North towards war, and then obviously they have to use a ring to attack into Carrick. And if they had missed here, then that would have been great, but they get a hit. And so this unit goes away, and that's that. And now my whole sort of 
whatever shenanigans that one unit could have caused um, basically just cost them one ring and one die, which is not nothing, but I think I could have been even more annoying, um, particularly if I had had scouts or something like that. There, there are a bunch of things I could have done. So um, I decided to go for it there because they only had about a 50-50 ch chance of killing that unit. And if they had not killed that unit, then I definitely could have caused quite a lot of trouble. So that was my thinking. I still need to get Gondor to war to prepare for Corsairs, but I feel like I still have some time. And the reason why I used the token there was because I want to be able to hide with Strider. And so it's risky to hide in a stronghold because then 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 if they play a tile drawing card which they've played none of so far um then they can reveal you and sort of get a two for one so that's why i wanted to just have the tempo now they've used up the ring now it's safe to to hide so i muster gondor because what else am i going to do with that um muster my my armies are sort of where they need to be and i want to get gondor to war and if they had, by the way, if they had not managed to um, kill that unit in Carrick and they hadn't pressed, then, uh, you know, maybe they would have pressed. I don't know. But if they hadn't pressed, I would have mustered in Carrick. And if they um, did press, I would have retreated to Old Forest Road. And then with one die, I could have moved to Dale. And then with the second die, instead of hiding with Strider, I could have mustered in Dale. And then at the start of next round, I could have mustered again in Dale. And then all of a sudden I have five hit points in Dale. And that would just be a pain in the neck for, for Shadow. Um, so, and then I would have delayed the hiding, but whatever, I could hide next round with Strider too. So that, so that was my thinking. I think it was probably worth the gamble, but I'm curious if other people have thoughts on what, what you would have done there. Um, and, and also, by the way, that shows the power of the tokens. You know, th this was just, it turned out I didn't actually cause that much trouble with it, but it does give an example of the sort of trouble you can cause with tokens. And earlier in the game, when I used a token to um, get, get Gandalf, or at least delay, it was sort of a delay of Saruman. Um, so I think, um, you know, maybe two tokens are too strong. Obviously, this game has gone very much in my favor. I don't know how much the tokens really swung it. I think, you know, if you swing it about five percentage points, then that's exactly right. So, um, okay, because we know from thousands of games that the shadow over thousands of games, based on the data we've seen, um, shadow wins about 55% to 45% in the base game with no, um, with no tokens. I, we don't have enough data, I would say to say how much tokens swing it, but we're collecting more. So we'll see. Um, okay. And then I go ahead and hide with my last die. And I guess, where did my opponent muster? They, they use the voice of Saruman to muster with their last die. All right. So turn five, I get into Mordor. Obviously that's great for me. And, um, my opponent allocates one eye rolls one and I get a nice amount of movement. Now, you know, we spec about two and a half and I get two, uh, and I get three. So that's good. And I think about, um, I think about, uh, using the Will of the West first, but I decide to use the character die because I'm not particularly worried about Day Without Dawn here. I have enough movement, I think. Um, maybe that's a mistake. I'm I'm worried about, you know, Corsairs. I only have two musters. It's also possible there could be, you know, Shadows on Misty Mountain and Lorien could come under siege. So I, I would rather have two musters if I can. And, you know, yeah, they have decent chances of having Day Without Dawn, but um, not 100%. And... So anyway, so I decide to just move with the character die and then we get a zero. Obviously that's very good for me. And, um, then they play day without dawn. So, you know, maybe in the end I should have just used the will of the West. Um, so maybe that was a mistake for me. Okay. I, um, move again and we get a three. So the fact that the fellowship has moved twice in Mordor and they haven't been revealed at all, um, Many, many, and they, I didn't get the red tile, you know, many, many tiles reveal the fellowship um, to move twice, I think, again, quite, quite lucky. So the hunt for the fellowship has just been very pleasant. And then at this point, obviously, Strider goes away. Um, I don't even take a random companion. It's just you want to lose the um, corruption efficiently. So that's very efficient. And Strider goes away. I'm not too worried about... Um, you know, at this point, I have huge, I would say, very high chances of winning. Um, but you still want to do what you can to minimize the chances of losing. And I think one possible way of losing is corruption, particularly because Isildur's Bane has not been played yet. So, um, you know, 
it's unlikely that any of these car tiles are going to hurt me too much with this Elder's Bane. But um, if I had, for instance, drawn a Hobbit there, that would put me up to seven. Um, Candles of Corpses, which is out there, could do one or two more. That puts me up to nine. It's not it's not impossible. Elder's Bane could kill me. So yes, they need some cards to do it. Um, but I feel like losing Strider efficiently, I'm not too worried about movement. Um, I think I have enough movement to be able to destroy the ring, given how well these first two steps have gone. Okay, my opponent attacks into Erebor, and they successfully defeat it, and um, that's that. So, I, you know, they had a giant army there. They, they, they took it over quite efficiently. Maybe I could have had more shenanigans with... Um, with character. Oh, and I grew. This is this is when I drew Grimbjorn. So you know, if I had waited slightly differently, that that may, maybe could have caused more trouble. Okay, my opponent thinks for a second. They muster into Orthanc normally, um, and then they muster the Mouth of Sauron, and then they move some armies along. I draw a strategy card, and I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake, but. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. I think I'd, I'd be happy with Kyrdens. I'd be happy with um, the Elven Stronghold reinforcements. I'd be happy with um, another Rohan reinforcement card, any any of those. So that's what I draw. Book of Mazarbal isn't bad. It lets me move Gandalf with a mustard die. Um, and at some point I'm thinking, given that I've seen new powers rising, I'm thinking that... Um, you know, Helm's Deep is going to come under siege, so being able to get Gandalf in there is good. Obviously, it would it might be a little better if I had saved Gua here, so that I could actually wait until Helm's Deep comes under siege instead of having to do it in advance of that. Um, but okay, and then I muster into Dol Amroth in case um, Corsairs of Umbar are coming. Obviously, I'm happy to have Immerhill of Dol Amroth, so I'm feeling okay about Dol Amroth. But obviously, getting an extra elite in there is good. I also considered mustering into Lorien or must mustering into Rivendell, but I don't know where my opponent is attacking yet. Um, I think it's most likely that they're going to go for the Shire and Pilargir and Edoras and um, Helm's Deep. And this, by the way, is the benefit of Wormtongue. So what they can do is they can attack into Fords of Aizen, and then they can just um, march along into Westamnet and fold in Edoras without getting um, Rohan all the way to war. And then and then they can take out Helm's Deep. So um, that, is the, that is the benefit of Wormtongue, which is why I'm thinking they're going to go for four cities. Um, and then we see that. Yeah, so we still don't know exactly where this army is going. We'll see. Okay. Um, I'm happy to see guards of the Citadel in case they come towards Minas Tirith. I don't know. I don't think that's too likely, but it's possible. And I get rid of scouts because at this point, I don't think scouts is going to matter too much. Um, yeah. Obviously, if I had saved that, I could have caused some trouble up here. All right, but I end up rolling three movement, which is basically what I need to be able to destroy the ring this round, uh, particularly since I still have an elven ring left. And um, with this initial movement, I don't get revealed. So again, three movements without getting revealed against this hunt pool is just, you know, ludicrous odds. I, I don't know. Maybe it's... I had, so there were five tiles in there when we started that didn't reveal me. Um, I'm going to count the red as a very bad tile because that's effectively slows me down by one. So um, five that were good, and then there were a total of 14. So that means the the calculation is um, five out of 14 times four out of 13 times three out of um, 12. That's a 3% chance, 3% chance of not getting revealed on three movements in Mordor. So, you know, um, that's a very lucky run up Mordor. I, you know, would it have really mattered that much if I didn't destroy the ring this round? No, because I don't think they're getting to 10 victory points this round. Um, probably would have been okay. But still, the point is, this is this is now not particularly close, and I've gotten very lucky. 3% chance of not getting revealed the three times with that pool. And by the way, this is what makes one of the reasons why Gollum is so good, because... Um, you know, all of these tiles, the zero, the one, the one, the two, all of these four reveal tiles are now not revealing, which is just a much more efficient way of going up Mordor. And it, particularly if I'm not, not worried about, um, corruption. So, okay. Lucky Mordor run. 
Um, I take a random companion because I just don't want to get higher on corruption. And it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, so there we go. My opponent moves uh, armies in it towards Cardalon. So now I think, okay, Lori and Rivendell are safe. I'm going to use these musters. Um, I don't know. I think my plan is I'm going to try and destroy the ring this round because why not? And I'm going to uh, move. Yeah. So I move here. I get revealed. Uh, which obviously is very fair. And um, then my opponent goes to South Ered Luin, which makes sense. And then they're moving this army into Dead Marshes so that they can take the Shire, they can take Edoras, they can take Helm's Deep. That's going to be there. And they can take Pilar Gear. That's going to be their 10 victory points, but obviously they're not going to be able to do it this round. Um, they play Ring Wraiths are abroad here. Um, they attack into Fords of Aizen. And at this point, I have one extra die if I want to destroy the ring this round. So I use this muster um, to get Gandalf into Helm's Deep. And, you know, um, I think that makes sense. I think mustering into the Shire, while would while I could, will not hold off this army. Obviously, mustering into Pilar Gear does not hold off this army. So that feels a bit of, the, a, bit of a waste. Um, so there we go. I play Book of Mazar Bowl, and and as it turns out, it was useful to be able to have a way of moving characters with a muster die. So whether or not this is actually going to help um, keep Helm's Deep alive against an army this big, I don't know. Obviously, it would have been nice to have an Ent, but I didn't even have a spare die to play an Ent, so that's that. Okay, my opponent attacks the Shire, and they win uh, that battle. I pass. My opponent attacks into Pilar Gear. They win that battle. So now they're up to seven. I hide with the Will of the West. And by the way, they had already played Day Without Dawn, right? So I wasn't worried about that Will of the West. Um, and then they use the Mouth to move armies, Druden Forest. It looks like they're going to attack into Minas Tirith, I guess, or maybe take Edoras. Um, don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. And then um, I use a ring to try and destroy I use an elven ring to try and destroy the one ring and the hunt pool um, has 10 tiles in it. The red tile will stop me. It won't make me lose the game, um, but the red tile will, will, will stop me. Everything else destroys the ring and um, we get it too. So, um, you know, that's, that was just the results of some very lucky um, movement at the beginning of the game, and then again, a lucky run up Mordor. It was actually unlikely that I would be able to destroy the ring. I would say relatively unlikely. I, I could destroy the ring in two two rounds with five dice, so um, you know, three is, was probably more realistic. But then again, my opponent would not have gotten to 10 victory points this round. Very likely I'd be able to destroy the ring next round, so that is what it is. Um, thank you to my opponent. Uh, my uh, they said that, unfortunately, this game uh, knocked them out of the number one all-time spot by losing this game. Uh, so I said, you know, I, I, you know, you beat me and got there, but you lost to me and went out of it. So um, either way, it was a good game. I think they played very well. We talked afterwards and they noted, I just want to show, this is a very cool move. Um, you know, obviously Helm's Deep is pretty well defended. What they said they were probably going to do was do a army movement next round to get to get their final victory points. They were going to do an army movement into um, Dimrel Dale and, uh, I don't know, maybe Fold or something like that. So that's one army movement. Then they were going to play uh, Shadows Gather and they were going to move this army from Fords of Aizen all the way up to Dimrel Dale which gives me one, you know, one turn to muster into Lorien, and um, then they can attack into Lorien with the Balrog, which obviously is very good, and um, that's just that's just a pretty cool play. They also had the chance to go after Grey Havens, but obviously Cairdon's ships could um, cause some problems if if you go after Grey Havens, um, and obviously they could also go after either of the um, Gondorian strongholds, so. Um, they, I think it's very likely that they would have been able to get to um, 10 victory points next round. But obviously, I probably would have been... If, if I didn't destroy the ring this round, I probably would have been able to destroy the ring next round. So um, that's how it goes. Thanks for watching. Let's uh, look at statistics real quick, just so you can see. Um, as it turns out, my movement ended up being pretty average, though that, you know, that first round was just crazy. Um, and uh, these did get flipped 
you can tell that free people did not roll 83 combat dice. That was shadow. Um, so they were slightly ahead on sixes, but none of these, uh, in the end, you know, I guess they were, they were high on musters, a little high on, on character dice, but overall the, the luck was, I think in some of the hunt tiles. And, uh, so that's that. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.